And I tell you, friends, birdwatching is a very wonderful activity. It's very relaxing. And it's very, very, really awesome to see the birds in the wild. At this point, I would like to invite uh, Congressman Mr. Albert Garcia to give us a few words. Last night, unwittingly, I watched a documentary about, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's entitled Strange Days on Our Planet. I usually watch uh, documentaries about uh, politicians, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, Richard Nixon. But last night, for some reason, I uh, put in a DVD about uh, 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 Strange Days in the Planet, which is produced by National Geographic. And I was amazed by how we are affected by things that happen in our environment. For example, uh, termites from Japan uh, affected the houses in New Orleans. Uh, fishes, foreign fishes from another place made crocodiles in Uganda more hostile. Uh, plants from uh, Brazil clogged Lake Victoria and almost threatened the livelihood of the fishermen there. So it kind of reminded me of how species go to and from countries, territories, and change the environment in that area. So with the, with the Philippines being a migratory bird site, it kind of reminded me of what the Wild Bird Club do for our country and how important uh, what they do is more than a hobby. It is very important because it helps us understand our environment. So it is very important that we understand our environment and maybe in understanding, we find the causes of red tide, of other diseases that happen in our country and possibly prevent further diseases like bird flu from happening in the Philippines. So I would like to call Mr. Rick, Ricky De Castro. Thank you, thank you very much. And first of all, it's an honor on the part of Milan to be part of this historic event. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can still remember when me and Mike and a few members were dreaming of coming up in a club that would be sponsored on bird watching. And now we're having this big event. I can also remember when I attended this uh, bird festival in Taiwan where around 50,000 50, 50, people attended, mostly students, celebrating the plight of the peregrine falcon from Taiwan to the Philippines. And when I came back, I told Mike that uh, we should have something like this here in the Philippines because there's so many uh, endemic species that we have. We should be so voting to showing everybody that uh, Filipino it's not only a diversified culture people, but also we have a lot of biodiversity. In the part of Mira, Philippines, uh, we are also host to around 1,000 Philippine ducks right now. It's around 1,000 in, in our very own backyard. As a matter of fact, we are in our own way trying to develop conservation activities within the power plant uh, to make sure that the uh, Philippine ducks and 20 other species of birds currently uh, existing within the power plant are protected. And uh, we're inviting everyone, we're conducting free tours to this area for you to see, to you, for you to find out how we seem to be in the midst of so many ducks. And uh, we'll pro probably to the Wild World Cup of the Philippines, we could set up some trips. Now friends, he is a co-author of two books, The Photographic Guide to Philippine Birds, and the only field guide that we use in the Philippines in which is the complete guide to Philippine birds. And I am proud to introduce to each one, Mr. Tim Fisher. Birding has been my hobby all my life, ever since I was a small boy. I had the opportunity of growing up in the countryside in England and uh, soon learned from my father the names of the birds. Bird watching has remained my main hobby all my life and it has taken me to many parts of the world um, throughout, uh, throughout my life. For the past 27 years, 
I have been birding all around the Philippines, and it has taken me to areas most people would never, never go. I've still got to go to Tawi Tawi, and if any help in arranging to go there would be very welcome. Bird watching. Bird watching is an all consuming hobby. It's very popular in the UK, Northern Europe, and the United States. It is also very popular in Japan, and the Wild Bird Society of Japan has a very large membership. Its pop popularity is increasing in Taiwan, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Singapore. The Bangkok Bird Club, which is now called the Bird Soci Conservation Society of Thailand, has over a thousand members. Now, with the formation of the Wild Bird Society of the Philippines, we hope that bird watching as a hobby will grow steadily in popularity throughout the country. Much of our knowledge of Philippine birds, and in fact worldwide, can be attributed to the amateur bird watcher. Devoted bird watchers are the most ardent conservationists as they will do all they can to ensure that their favourite sites are not lost and are preserved. They are also major contributors to science. I was very fortunate about 10 years ago with one or two friends uh, while in the mountains of Bukidnon to flush a bird from the ground that was found to be new to science. It's now called, it's called the Bukidnon Woodcock. And over the past 20 years, I have been very fortunate in, in basically discovering a number of uh, new facts, such as new undescribed nests, such as scale feather Malcoa, a celestial monarch, and many new bird songs. And many resident and visiting bird watchers have also made new observations in respect to new range records, bird calls, and, uh, and, and new records of uh, birds unknown in the Philippines. So, amateur bird watchers play a big part. Philippine birds. The Philippines is very interesting and exciting for the keen bird watcher due to the high biodiversity throughout the islands. There are close to 600 species of birds and 1,000 subspecies. And amongst those birds, there are 190 endemics. Endemic means that they are only found in the Philippines and nowhere else in the world. As we study the birds more in the field, we find that many subspecies are species in their own right. The Philippine hawk owl, for example, is probably five species. There is a great, therefore there is still a great deal to be discovered about Philippine birds that the bird watcher can contribute to. From the very exciting discovery of the Palayan rail um, to several species not having been seen in the wild. Only and a number of species, such as the uh, um, Luzon rail and Worcester's button quail, have never been, have never been seen. And other birds, like the Negros fruit dove, has only ever been seen once, and then it was shot. Most endemic birds are to be only found in the forest, and it is this habitat that is fast disappearing. Birds are a good indicator of the health of the environment in any area. If one can find good numbers of parrots and pigeons, it, is indica it indicates that there is good forest and not too much hunting. If there are no pigeons or parrots, it indicates the reverse. Some birds are in a very critical situation in the Philippines. The Philippine eagle is highly endangered, and so are many others. We have lost several birds 
to date, such as the Pelican and the Cyrus Crane, and it is likely that the Woolly Neck Storm will disappear too. The Philippine cockatoo was once a very common bird, and I'm sure your grandfathers will tell you that it was a pest throughout the country. It's now very scarce, having been tracked for the bird trade. Some islands have lost nearly all their forests, and their endemics are, are also in danger. Cebu and Negros are prime examples. The beautiful Walden Thornbill, or Varuma, is highly endangered. We need to have more protection for critical sites. Mindanao Low Lowland Forest is the richest habitat in the country for birds. And as far as I know, there are no sites that are set up to reserve this habitat. In respect to this, we need to expand the interest of bird watching in these areas. Schools are a good place to start. It is surprising how many people get interested in birds given the chance, especially going out with others in a group. Every year, many foreign visitors come to the Philippines to see as many of the endemics as they can in their limited time. The Philippine Eagle is, of course, at the top of their list, but they also want to see all the other spectacular birds, such as the Rufus Hornbill and Scale Feathered Balcoa, and mythical birds, such as the Whiskered Pitter and Celestial Monarch. These visitors who come to the Philippines end up seeing far more of the Philippines than any other type of tourist. As we go to Banawi for, for the Luzon Montaigne endemics, they also get a chance to see the rice tourism. Where to go bird watching? Many sites are hard to get to and require much travel. There are though a number of areas closer to Manila that can be visited quite easily. Two of my favourite places are Mount Makili, where there are over 50 endemics to be found, and the Kandaba Marsh, which, uh, when it has a lot of water, is very rich in birds. Also, the Sudic Forest and Quezon National Park. Closer afield are the American Cemetery and various points along Manila Bay. All you need is a pair of binoculars and a good pair of shoes.